What happened once Colossus arrived at Bletchley Park? The first Colossus machine was delivered from the post office to Bletchley Park in January 1944. We know this because Tommy Flowers recorded in his diary the start-up of the machine. He also recorded on the same day, rather more prosaically, car broke down on the way home. Whether he was any better at fixing his car than he was at building um, proto-computers, we don't know. The machine was successful, it speeded up the process, and immediately there was demand for more similar machines. So Flowers continued to work on the design at Dollis Hill, and in June of 1944, the Colossus Mark II, also Colossus II because the machines were numbered, was delivered. And that again speeded up the process. And Dollis Hill continued to build Colossus machines right through till the end of the war in 1945, by which point 10 machines had been delivered to Bletchley Park and an 11th machine was under construction, but although that one, because the war ended, that one was never delivered. The Colossus machines were installed in Block F, which had been completed in September 1943, a few months before. Each machine was operated in the same way as the bomb machines by a small team of Wrens, members of the Women's Royal Naval Service. The Wren operators had two jobs. One was to uh, program or plug up the machine so that the correct key that was being searched was uploaded, so to speak, in modern parlance. Uh, but there was also a paper tape carrying the, the message that they were investigating. And that also had to be loaded onto large uh, wheels. And it was quite tricky because the tape travelled very quickly and it did tend to tear and fly off and fill the room with teleprinter tape. So quite a complicated and physical job. Uh, one of the consequences of this is that the Wrens became some of the real experts in operating Colossus and how it worked and what could be done with it. And one of the features of the Newmanry, of Max Newman's management style, is he's very keen to get feedback from his staff and they have meetings and suggestion books where even quite junior personnel can come forward and go, I figured this out or I'd learnt this particular lesson about how we could improve the work. And so there's a constant uh, effort to speed up the process, develop little tricks and routines that can make the code breaking more efficient. And one of the more interesting aspects of the Colossus machine is that although it was built as a single purpose machine to do a very particular task, once it had started running, the operators and some of the other code breakers Donald Mickey and Jack Good, for example, realised that there were things that Colossus could do which hadn't, it hadn't been designed for and it had other applications to the Lorentz problem that they could make it solve even though these hadn't been on the original drawing board. So it is a remarkably flexible machine from that point of view.